Imagine that one evening you and your friends get together to play a new board game. You unpack the box, seize those fancy game figures, game board and playing cards. But no rules. Obviously you can't play the game. So now what? Anyone up for charades? Trying to set up DevOps without knowing its culture, aka rules, is pretty much the same thing, but you can substitute charades. Hello, my name is Igor Pavlenko. I'm a quality assurance competence leader at Altaxoft. And this was another DevOps metaphor. In this video, I'll explain why DevOps doesn't work without culture, what the DevOps culture looks like, and then I'll try steering you towards building it in your company. So without further ado, let's begin. If you imagine culture as something like this or this, that's all true. But if I were to explain what culture is to a child, I would say it's why people say hello, goodbye to each other. In other words, it's a set of rules and knowledge that carries a society through history. Luckily, DevOps doesn't have such a vast background, but it works in the same way as the set of rules for all the underlying practices. As we have discussed in my previous videos, there are so many important aspects of DevOps, both from the practical and technological perspectives. Here we use automation and numerous continuous practices that make DevOps what it is. But all of these work only when we know the rules. So, what are the main principles of DevOps culture? Historically, development and operations people live in completely different environments and don't communicate much. While a developer's concern is shipping new software features, the operations staff care about keeping the software alive and accessible for the user at all times. When both parties are locked in their responsibilities and don't receive enough feedback, it gets harder for the team to align with a common vision. DevOps' aim was to break the silos and set up the communication between these teams. This leads us to the first principle of DevOps culture – collaboration and communication. The idea of putting devs and ops together should be seen as a wider concept. Here we strive for open communication between all the parties, including devs, QA, operations and stakeholders. Communication gives the opportunity to openly express ideas among the team members and share insights from their domains. We are trying to let developers and testers speak live, not via complex ticketing systems. How does it work in practice? Imagine you are going to discuss a new feature, which mostly requires developers to be invited. While code talks don't concern ops people, you are likely to invite them as well. This way, both teams can share knowledge on their domain expertise, which doesn't happen otherwise. And this will help team members speak about potential risks considering all possible scenarios. The second principle is shared responsibility. Well, it doesn't mean that developers need to learn how to configure a server. But the principle of shared responsibility requires all the parties to understand each other's work and be attentive to it. Let me explain in more detail. Say there was a bug in the code that hadn't been found during the testing phase. On top of that, system configuration wasn't optimized for the given feature, and that resulted in downtime or incorrect application work. Traditionally, we'll try to roll back the system and fix the problem locally. A developer will be responsible for fixing the bug. The idea of shared responsibility suggests that every member of a team should be involved to learn what else could be a part of the problem. This helps find the missing part in software testing, configure environment, and fix the actual bug. This leads us to the third principle, a business-oriented mindset. When you adopt DevOps, you have to answer an overarching question. Why do we do this? The basis of the DevOps culture is a specific mindset that aims at bringing value to the customer. In practice, it means that we should think not about the producing the code that passes quality gates, but features that work great for the end user. Finally, the fourth principle is automation. Programming scripts helps us spend less time on tedious tasks and consequently make fewer mistakes. And as a result, it lets us devote more time and effort to communication or more creative work. But think beyond test or deployment automation. We are generally trying to eliminate any access or mundane work from the development. For example, we can automate bug reporting or send alerts to the team about any changes in the current tickets. Now, let's discuss how to build a DevOps culture in your company, applying each of these four principles. First of all, a DevOps culture is a complex thing that requires explanation, so you need to familiarize teams with the general idea. 
Your development and operations people are pretty comfortable working as they work, so they need a reason to change their rules of communication and approach to software development. State the purpose of DevOps and elaborate on the main principles of its culture. Explain why you need devs and ops to work together. Try finding pain points in every day's work of your team and suggest DevOps practices as a solution for them. For instance, your devs struggle to fix the bugs, as they often lack feedback from the production environment. DevOps can resolve this with setting up correct tools and approaches for feedback gathering. Next, we need to improve communication. People have to learn to work together, and starting with communication is a great idea. But how can we nudge people to talk to each other more? Well, you can start by applying some basics. If your devs don't even know your administration guys, introduce them to each other. Create conditions under which people will naturally communicate. If your team is in a physical office, move everyone involved to a single room. If team members are working remotely, make sure they have convenient means of communication. But keep it simple, so these channels don't create another silo. You can arrange meetings on a specific agenda, which will require contribution both from devs and ops. For example, you can set up weekly discussion on customers' feedback, or you may review the production process and, at the same time, familiarize everyone with each other's responsibilities. Besides that, we need to form a business-oriented mindset. Our subject is the way people think of their work. Generally, there are two types of people at work. Those who strive to meet technical requirements by completing the task, and those who try to bring business value to the company. While both approaches work, orientation on the business value is the core idea of DevOps. So what can we do to change people's attitude to the work? Well, the most basic step is to hire people with such values. But in most cases, we'll have to work with the existing team and build this mindset from the ground up. First of all, tell your team more about why users need given features. Support your team with the business insights so they can always ask themselves whether this or that action adds value to the product. It shouldn't be just code. Second, provide team members with the tools to track product success on their own. Some companies practice sharing business KPIs with internal teams. That allows specialists to think more about business value and contribute to it. Also, it's vital to provide a direct way to communicate with the customer. The most basic thing you can do is to let customers submit their feedback via emails. But there are lots of third-party tools for feedback gathering. Or you can provide a channel for the team to communicate with the users. Together, this will support the product team with business insights. From this point, we can also introduce the idea of shared responsibilities. Merging the teams together and fostering discussions help increase awareness of each other's problems and focus more on the product, not on specific tasks. Developers should understand challenges related to production monitoring and deployment. This way, software engineers will contribute their expertise to the ops part. Practically, we can assign tasks that will involve both parties working in a single environment. For example, let's take infrastructure code management. Fine-tuning the servers via configuration files allows developers to contribute to the ops part of the job, as devs are familiar with the software they are going to release. However, server configuration can be challenging for the engineers, as it requires knowledge on the ops subject matter. So we can assign configuration as a mutual task for both parties. The idea is to build a mutual sense of responsibility for the product. Such tasks help us bring people and their expertise together and show how their contribution affects the end result. But you also need to remember that if something breaks, there can't be only one responsible person. Say, you shouldn't blame Ops part for the conflicts in production. Instead, the whole team should handle the issue and take responsibility, no matter who broke it. With that vision in place, you will foster a collaborative approach to work, setting mutual business goals instead of individual technical tasks. While the developer will obviously fix the bug, the rest of the team will improve the workflow itself. During all of these cultural changes, we can start to implement automation technologies that will remove the manual burden and improve the quality of work. At this point, you may wonder how these abstract notions transform into something we call DevOps. Well, if we look at the examples of Netflix or Atlassian, we can single out one thing. These practices serve the way people communicate and work inside the DevOps team. As for the specifics, you have to tackle these challenges yourself, as every team and every culture is unique. But that's not the end of our journey to DevOps. 
And in the next video, we'll explore specific metrics you can apply to track your DevOps implementation success. But for now, that's it. Stay tuned.